this beautiful parable of Jesus's, the Darnell, the wheat and the Darnell, is one that if you read on, Jesus explains the, the meaning of what he's saying. He compares the sower of the good seed to himself and the wheat, the subjects of Christ, the, 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 um, the subjects of the kingdom, the enemy, the evil one, and his subjects. And it's interesting that the parable teaches us an important truth, that yes, there is good and evil in our world on a community level on a big scale if you like we are constantly experiencing this the wars in our world are an obvious example and in recent times we've also become very conscious of the ill treatment that we dish out to our world, to nature, the way we misuse the resources. And if we're not careful, as an old professor at our seminary used to say, nature will eventually bite us back. <coughs> On a personal level too, we know that Yes, there's evil in the world, but there's also, we're not always people filled with the best and the purest motives in what we do. And if we look carefully into our own hearts, we realise that yes, we strive to be virtuous, we strive to be good, but at times we too go off on a tangent. And thankfully, God is patient with us. God waits for us to turn back and to come back to him. We can tra- take great heart uh, from this beautiful parable that uh, the servants weren't told to go and root out all the evil, get rid of the evil straight away. Why is this so? Well, the obvious answer is because God has given you and me, given humanity, free will. We are not puppets. We are free to make a choice. And that's the extraordinary thing about the way we are, the way God has made us in his image, with complete freedom, free will, to choose good or evil. So what should we do? Well, one of the easiest or perhaps obvious things is that on a personal level we should strive to practice the works of mercy as we strive to grow virtuous and better than we are one of the easiest ways to help us grow in goodness is to attend to those works of mercy, which of course again they come from the story of the last judgment. What are the seven works of mercy? To give food to the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, to give shelter to the homeless, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and the imprisoned, to bury the dead. Of course, we do all these things according to our means and our circumstances. And sometimes these, um, the responsibilities or the duties that we have, like parents bringing up a family, we can't always participate in doing some of these things. But there comes a time in our life and um, that when we can, In this community, we have the Vincent de Paul, a group that's always looking for our attention, our membership, 
and a group that does those things of bringing, of relieving those who are suffering. Father Mark has started a Tuesday night group of an opportunity for us to grow in our faith as well as the corporal works of mercy there are of course also the spiritual works of mercy and one of those important works of course is that we instruct and are instructed ourselves that we receive instruction that we grow in our knowledge of our faith each Tuesday night for over the next number of weeks separate topics that Father Mark will be touching on this coming week, the Word and the Sacrament, the Eucharist and the Word. And each one is a discreet or complete session. And I'm sure that you, you and I would benefit from taking a little time to renew and review our own faith. So as we contemplate this wonderful story and wonderful parable of the Lord's. By the way, I mentioned there that on a global scale, one of the things that's important is the care of the world. It's interesting that four years ago, Pope Francis has made care of the world, care of creation, um, another work of mercy. Uh, in his first encyclical, he talks about this of how important it is that we take proper care of our world. Of course, we learn this as early as primary school when we put our rubbish in the bin. We're told to do that. I don't think the kids do it anymore, but we used to have a, you know, if you misbehaved in any way during the breaks, during lunchtime or the playtime, we'd have to do scab duty which involved going around the schoolyard and picking up all the yucky rubbish that the other kids had thrown on the ground. I think for me that was the start of learning to take care of our environment. It's an important um, job, an important thing, and it's interesting that Francis should have made it a eighth corporal work of mercy, taking care of our world. You can easily translate that to spiritually, to taking care of our own souls and our spiritual life and eradicating and removing some of the rubbish, I suppose, that stores up at times in our hearts. So this beautiful parable of the Lords of the Darnell, let us make it our own. Let us see what response we can make on a personal level in our own lives with family and friends and on a global level. Of course, this pandemic at the moment is certainly one of the Darnells of our lives at the moment. <laughs>